Hey guys, in this example, well, in this video, I'm going to go through the three graph example that I was talking about in class. So what we've got here is we first I did mention to you guys that we have a parabola here and then we have a sine graph and then we have a semicircle here. So the first part I'm going to do is the parabola. Um, as usual, you can kind of see that four zero right here is the vertex. So I'm going to start working with the parabola first. Okay, so I'm going to write this as a uh, x minus four squared plus zero, because really that's that's my vertex right there. So I'm going to write that down like that. The second thing is I need to use a point to substitute and calculate what the a value is. So I'm going to substitute a ten. So I'm going to write down eight and ten. And I'm going to substitute this into the equation. So what I've got here is 10 equals a uh, 8 and then minus 4 squared plus 0. So what we end up with 10 equals a 8 minus 4 is 4 squared. Uh, 0 I don't really need to worry about because it's really nothing. So then this would be written as 10 equals a 4 squared is 16 and then a is equal to 10 over 16. So the equation for the parabola is going to be y equals to 10 over 16 x minus 4 squared plus 0. Again you don't need to write that plus 0 but I'm just going to leave that in there. So I'm going to draw this in Desmos right now and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. So in Desmos I've got uh, let's get rid of this. Hang on. So I'm going to have y equals 10 over 16 bracket x minus 4 squared plus 0. Okay, so let's look at a couple of the points. So that point is uh, 0, 10. And I think the other point ends up being 810. So let me just check that if that actually works. So I'm going to put in all the points that I needed for my parabola. Cool. And as you guys can see, that fits in nicely with my, the parabola actually fits in with those three points. But the problem is I only want uh, the parabola to be actually going from, like I only want part of the parabola right so the best way to do this and um, and I know we'll kind of kind of run through it briefly but right now imagine that the y-axis is right there and the x-axis right there all right so I'm actually just looking at the parabola from when x is equal to 0 till x is equal to 8 so that's those two values right there so I can write the domain as 0 less than x Less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to 8. So if I go back to my Desmos graph, I'm going to go back into the parabola area. I'm going to put my squiggly brackets 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 8. And boom, I've got my parabola right there. Okay, sweet. Now let's close the bracket. Let's go to the sine graph. Now the sine graph points are 8, 10, 11, 15, 14, 10. Okay, let's just, I'm just going to put the points down first. Let's get rid of these colors here. Let's make them the same as what they were before. So we got black, black, done. So the parabola was black. This very ugly looking green color of paint, but we're going to use that anyway. So we've got 8, 10, we've got 11, 15. We have 14, 10, and finally we have 20, 10. Okay, so that was the green one, right? So let's go back to my notes. Uh, okay, so with the sine graph, just gonna do a rough sketch here. So with this sine graph, as I told you guys, it's always a good idea to just draw that four by two box. 
okay and if you look at it I mean we really only need two points this point right here which is 8 10 and then we've got 11 15 right there okay so from this point we can actually figure out what the amplitude is because amplitude is this part right here how much it's rising by and that we can look at it with 15 minus 10 so we can actually say that the amplitude is going to be uh, 5 then we look at the period now for the period um, I've got these two numbers right now 11 and 8 which means if I go 11 minus 8 that's going to be 3 uh, so what should I get this so it's gonna be 3 so if each block is worth 3 that's gonna be 3 that's gonna be 3 and that's gonna be 3 which means the period is equal to 12 now if you also remember there's another point that's actually given right here oh maybe that's a bad color to choose where's my undo button we're talking about right here see how that's 2010 so 2010 is actually right here and that's another way to look at it as well because if you think about it if you go 20 minus 8 it's also equal to 12 okay so we got the equation for the sine graph so we've got y is equal to what we do is a sine 2 pi over p x minus h plus v now we got the amplitude the amplitude is 5 so that's going to be 5 sine 2 pi over p p is equal to 12 put that in the green color and then we've got x minus h now h and v is this right here the starting point so we've got 8 and 10. okay so let's go back to desmos and actually put this up uh, give me a second let me just adjust it so if we go back here so we had y equals to 5 was the amplitude then we had sine of 2 pi divided by 12 which was the period and then x minus 8 plus 10 and as you can see uh, those the sine graph is actually going through all those green points now just like before we don't want everything with the sine graph we only want part of it so we're going to go back here and have a look at which part we're going to need and if you look at it it's so it's starting at 8 and finishing off at 20. so really the domain has to be between 8 and 20. so let's go back to our desmos graph and we're going to put this between 8 and 20 and there we go we're done Cool, the sine graph is down. Now we need to look at the circle. So we got three points for the circle, 2010, and that's in blue color. So let me put that up. So we've got 2010. And what else? Whoa, 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 whoa. 2010, we have 2515. And we have 3010. That a nice blue color okay so let's go and work out what the circles um, deal is okay so with the circle the first thing is uh, thank you for one of my students that actually figured out where the center is so if you want to figure out this is a semicircle right that means this is what the full circle actually looks like so if we look at the point right now so this is 20 and then this is 30 that means halfway through it's going to be 25 and they're all in that same line so that means it's going to be 25 10. so the center of the circle is at 25 10. all right so remember the equation so the equation is x minus uh, h squared plus y minus v squared equals r squared and we actually to I told you that h and v What's the center of the circle so in this case we've got x minus 25 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals r squared now we need to figure out what the radius is we know what the center is so if you look at this from the center 
to this edge, it's 5. And then from here to going up here, so it's actually going from 10 to 15, that means that's also 5. So you can actually see that the radius is 5, because if you look at it from here to here going backwards, 25 take away 20 is also 5. So that means the radius is 5. So we've got x minus 25 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 5 squared. Okay? So, and again, if you look at, um, I'm going to go back to Desmos and put the graph in there. So I've got x minus 25 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 5 squared. Great. Now there's only one problem here. So the problem is, in my original graph, I actually wanted the semicircle but the top version of it. So basically I only wanted this part right here. Okay. So with this one, we can't actually use the domain because, see, the domain is actually going from 20 to 30. All right. So if I actually put down 20 to 30, I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to put down the domain as 20 to 30. And what you see is that, well, it's not really getting, it's actually showing the whole circle, but I only want the top half of the circle. Now, this is where you guys need to understand. If I want the top half of the circle, with circle, it's particularly quite weird in that sense, because I only want the top half. So I'm going to kind of sketch the circle separately here, just this part here. So what I need to do is I actually need to look at the y values. All right, so that's 2010. That's 2515. So in other words, I'm looking at, because um, remember the y-axis is there. And so what I'm looking for is what is the y value going to be? And if I look at it as the y value, that's actually the range of this is actually between 10 to 15. So the way we write it is for the circle, we're going to write this as 10 less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 15. So let's go back to our Desmos. So instead of x, we're going to change that. And we're going to put it between 10, less than or equal to uh, y, less than or equal to 15. And there we go. That shows the top of the half of the circle. Now, if you want the bottom half of the circle, you would actually put this between 10, sorry, between 5 and 10. That actually covers the bottom of the circle. But that's not what we're looking for. We're actually looking for the top half of the circle. And so we're going to leave it like that. OK. So guys, uh, that's basically it for this uh, little video. Uh, I'll forward you guys a few more um, examples like this for you guys to work on class. So that's it for this session. Thank you for watching.